local scenes. All right, we're going to get the program started. Good morning, everyone. Almost afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. We're allowing uh, a few of us to come on in and take seats. But again, good morning and welcome to, to, to today's celebration in recognition of our hard working students at Cuyahoga Community College. For 33 years, we have gathered to acknowledge and support our mentees in honor of one of our illustrious ancestors, Frances M. Franklin, who throughout her extraordinary career as an educator, kept student progress and student success as a top priority. Her daughter, Dr. Carol S. Franklin, joins us today in continued support of this foundational legacy. Like her mother, Dr. Franklin left an indelible print on the landscape of education here at Tri-C, which has lasted long beyond her retirement in 2012. Our institution continues to recognize her impact through the Carol S. Franklin Social Science Speakers Series. It goes without saying that there is greatness all throughout this room today. And it is a privilege for me to help guide the afternoon's activities. Joining me in that effort is my friend, educational partner in crime, and super supporter, Dr. Warren J. Glenn, affectionately known as Skip. Warren Glenn has over 15 years of experience in post-secondary education. His journey in higher education has enhanced his expertise to administer grants, manage deliverables, and mentor and motivate young scholars. Currently, he is the area sponsor for the Ohio Department of Education Community Schools of Northeast Ohio. Dr. Glenn previously oversaw the Northeast region of Dropout Recovery High Schools for Oakmont Education. His responsibilities there included budget management and supervision of school directors. During his second year, he successfully assisted with increasing the conversion rate by 3% in the Northeast region of Ohio, as well as implemented a diversity, equity, and inclusion program. Prior to his current role, Dr. Glenn was the Director of Student Support Services TRIO program at Tri-C's Eastern Campus. He led his team in support of first-generation college students in the areas of tutoring, college completion, cultural events, and transfer to four-year colleges and universities. He began his career at Tri-C as the director of the Educational Talent Search TRIO program, where he increased campus and community partnerships, as well as established and maintained working relationships with area secondary schools and educational institutions. During Tri-C's two-year grant, Mr. Glenn presented several times on the Educational Talent Research search trio and the priority to budget management and regulatory requirements. Dr. Glenn is a proud member of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity, Zeta Nu chapter. <laughs> Dr. Glenn also successfully completed the Leadership Development Institution with the National Council on Black American Affairs. He recently received the Doctor of Education with an emphasis on community college leadership from National American University. A few of his volunteer efforts include mentoring scholars enrolled in the Black American Council and organizing Books Brothers Engagement to Graduation Event, which is a black male initiative program at Cuyahoga Community College. Dr. Glenn. Thank you for that great introduction of myself. Sometimes I forget some of the things that I've accomplished in life. So thank you for reminding me of that, Dr. Pickens. I have the honor of introducing my co-host here today, the wonderful Dr. Pickens, who I refer to as my doctoral sands as we cross the burning sands together of becoming doctoral members of, a, of the doctoral society. So today, Dr. Pickens serves as a full-time tenure counseling faculty member at Cuyahoga Community College cultivating student success at Tri-C for over 20 years. 
Her counseling expertise focuses on academic career and personal counseling. As an associate professor of general studies, her instruction covers personal growth, life management, strategies for success, and, and navigating the college environment. In addition to teaching courses, Tony has developed and facilitated student success workshops with emphasis on time management, body image, and goal setting. Dr. Pickens continuously serves as a leader with the Black American Council and a mentor for minority students through this organization. She is the college-wide program coordinator of the Minority Women's Leadership Initiative at Tri-C, which focuses on creating a space for women to evolve personally, professionally, and intellectually while cultivating leadership skills in the area of public speaking. Dr. Pickens embarked on a sabbatical to research first-year experience programs in community college. And since its completion in 2014, she has expanded upon that focus to serve in multiple capacities at the institution as a first-year experience faculty leader. She helped to develop the curriculum for Cuyahoga Community College's first-year experience course. She's the co-author of Tri-C Track, Mapping College Success and Personal Growth, which is the student manual for the course and helped to design and lead faculty training and development efforts across the college as committee chair. She extended that passion and focus through earning her doctorate from the National American University in Community College Leadership. Her research focused on identifying professional development strategies that comprehensively support first-year experience instructors. Dr. Pickens continues to share the knowledge and expertise gained along this journey. At several national conferences, having most recently presented at the League for Innovation in Community College in March. Her work has been recognized by the institution over the years in several ways. Dr. Pickens received the President's Award at the Western Campus for the First Year Experience Program. She was granted the Campus Momentum Award for FYE Faculty Training and Development and was the first faculty member at Tri-C to receive the AAUP Authenticity Award in 2019. The award itself was inspired by her fun, down-to-earth, and effective leadership style. Outside of academia, Dr. Pickens actively serves in the Greater Cleveland Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. She was recognized for 25 years of service in a formal celebration last month, which I attended. She is also a busy mom to a young athlete who successfully competes on a national level Dr. Pickens also shares her artistic gifts as a professional singer, capturing audiences with performances locally, nationally, and across the globe in several countries. My sans, Dr. Pickens. Thank you, Dr. Glenn. Now, it wasn't even a year ago yet when Dr. Michael Baston joined us as our new president at Cuyahoga Community College. When he joined us, he hit the ground running and has been running ever since. So much so that he was not able to join us today. However, he did something to share what he has to say. Good morning, I'm Michael Baston, president of Cuyahoga Community College. And I'd like to welcome you to the 33rd annual Francis Franklin Scholarship and Protege Luncheon. This is our first in-person event since 2019 and we're thrilled to have all of you join us today. This luncheon honors the memory of Francis Franklin, a beloved Cleveland educator and Tri-C faculty member. The money raised from this event provides financial assistance for Tri-C's Black American Council students. We are very excited and proud that two accomplished Black American Council alumni will serve as our keynote speakers today, Shay Val Connor and Tierra Young. This truly speaks to the power of mentorship and the difference that the BAC makes in our students' lives. Once again, I want to welcome you and thank you for your support of this wonderful event. We would like to bring our next speaker up, and that is Ms. Angela Johnson. Ms. Angela Johnson serves as the Vice President of Enrollment Management and Student Affairs for Cuyahoga Community College. Please welcome her up. Before I welcome you, I think I'm to tell you that you can eat. <laughs> 
So welcome, welcome on behalf of the video that Dr. Baston shared and behalf of the executive leadership team. I'm so excited to always be a part of this event as, as my role as the administrator for the college that supports Black American Council, Black Caucus, all of the work that happens in supporting our mentors. So I wanted to talk a little bit just about the, the theme today, what we do matters. What we do matters, what you do matters, the support that you provide to the college and the support specific to the scholarship, to our students, to our students' persistence, their perseverance, their success, that all matters. So I wanna thank you all, not just for being here and being back, because this is again our first event in person in a long time, but just for all the work that you do to help support our students. And to our students, thank you for believing in us, and trusting us with your education, with your support, with, with the empathy to come back every day and the work that you do. And to our graduates, thank you for persevering to the end, and I cannot wait to see you in a couple of weeks at Kapitzvet. Thank you. Thank you, VP Johnson, and you're right, it's been since 2019 that we've been here together in person for this event. Now for the occasion, I'd like to welcome Dr. Lemuel Stewart III, President of the Black American Council, Associate Professor and Counselor at the Western Campus of Cuyahoga Community College. And I'm also a proud member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> so as Dr. Pickens said, I'm Dr. Lemuel Stewart, and I have the pl pleasure of serving as the president of the Advisory Council for the Black American Council. And it is a pleasure to welcome you here today to our 33rd annual Francis M. Franklin Scholarship Luncheon. <clears throat> as VP Johnson mentioned, our theme is What We Do Matters. And this theme was chosen to recognize that all we do as students, faculty, staff, and as people matter as we interact with the world. The Black American Council was founded in 1969 as the Black Caucus, with a mission to support and encourage students, faculty, and staff of color to be able to achieve their academic and professional goals. The Black Caucus became the Black American Council in 2015, and the focus continues to be on equity and inclusive excellence particularly as it applies to our students, faculty, and staff of color. Throughout the program, we will acknowledge the students of the BAC, you'll hear me say that a lot. We have an excellent, who have excelled in academic excellence and performance, penmanship, and college service. We are proud of all of our students' accomplishments, and we celebrate those accomplish, accomplishments today. The Black American Council is active on all of our major campuses, and throughout the year, the BAC has provided forums for students that have included both college faculty, staff, as well as community leaders. We have had several virtual events, and now we can be back in person. The BAC has had a very active virtual drop-in center for students. The Minority Women's Leadership Initiative held a How Black Women Changed the Face of Education, led by our own Dr. Tony Pickens. The BAC, along with TRIO, held a business etiquette workshop for students. The BAC held a sock drive this past October, entitled Socktober, and collected over 100 pairs of socks, along with coats and other items for the homeless. The BAC held a panel discussion for minority males in higher education at the CMSD Men of Color Youth Summit. The BAC has also partnered with the Stand for Racial Justice Committee here at Tri-C on several workshops and events. The BAC has worked closely with the Tri-C Foundation to secure emergency funding through grants to help students with tuition and life event needs to help them stay in school and achieve their academic success. The BAC's Black and Brown Male Summit is being postponed until fall semester this year due to scheduling and testing conflicts. And these are just a few of the activities that the BAC has been engaged in this year. All of the BAC programs are geared to broaden students' knowledge of resources and expand their networking capacity. The Black American Council is proud of our record of serving students. 
The BAC is currently serving over 289 students as mentees with 125 faculty, staff, and administrators serving as mentors. The BAC has an 84% retention rate from fall to spring and a 91% graduation rate for our mentees. We celebrated 28 students who graduated this past fall and 48 students will complete their degree or certificate requirements spring and summer terms. That means the BAC celebrates a total of 76 graduates for the 22-23 academic year. And this year, the BAC will award an estimated over $61,750 in academic excellence, merit, and essay scholarships this year. These numbers speak to the success of our mentoring programs and the dedication of our mentors to the students. And this is why we are here today. We are here to celebrate the academic success of our students. The Black American Council would like to thank all of our community supporters, the Tri-C Foundation, our administra administrators, faculty, and staff for all your continuous financial support and your presence here today at the Francis M. Franklin Luncheon to support our students. On behalf of the students we serve, they too would like to thank you and assure you that your support is appreciated and will continue, hopefully. And to our students, we thank you for your commitment to your education and remembering that you are a part of the Black American Council family. Thank you. All right, if we could have everybody stand. As we are going to be singing along with the lovely and amazing Dr. Tony Pickens. Every voice and sing till earth in heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound. Loud as the rolling sea Sing a song Full of the faith that the dark past has taught us Sing a song Full of the hope that the present has brought us Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought
may now be seated. And now, to deliver the invocation, we will welcome the Reverend Dr. Terry A. Webb, pastor of Christian Unity Baptist Church, vice president of the Black American Council, and assistant dean of counseling, psychological, and access services at the Metro campus of Cuyahoga Community College. Good afternoon, everyone. All right, I'm gonna be brief, because this is when we're supposed to start grubbing, so don't worry, all right? <laughs> All right, I wrote it, so I'll stick to script. Amen, all right. May we all bow our heads for a moment. I'm praying Judeo-Christian manner, which is what I'm trained in. So, we thank thee, dear Lord, for allowing us to come together to celebrate the success of the mentors and the students of Black American Council. We're eternally grateful that you have empowered these students to strive amid societal inequities, technological and economic challenges. We know that some of you have overcome significant challenges to be here today. And for that, we thank you, Lord, for watching over them and keeping them safe and on the right path. Please continue to grant everyone under the sound of my voice solace and strength that they need to persevere in uncertain times. God, we ask that you embolden and renew the strength of those who labor daily to uplift and equip our black and brown students to increase self-efficiency and self-effectiveness -eff and mitigate the issues that impede their forward progression towards their hopes and dreams. We ask you, dear God, to continue to work that the way that you have, and it started in all of these under the sound of my voice once again, that you stoke in them the fire of determination that keeps them on the road to sustain success. We want it to taste so sweet to them that they cannot stop eating on the road to success. With you, we know that all things are possible because with you, those that the society has rejected can be the very ones that actually will save the society from ruin. May God continue to grant all in here the resilience and the focus that only the grace of God can give. Stay faithful to your commitments and confident in accomplishing all of your life goals and dreams. And never forget that with God and BAC, you are never alone. Most gracious, most merciful God, who walks beside us in all of our lives, we pray, we pray, we pray that you continue to walk with us to be that beacon of hope that we need in these times that we're facing as we continue on to march on in victory. And we pray this, dear God, that we never stop, we never give up, because with you all things are possible. And this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. thank you, Reverend Dr. Terry Webb. Now, as you continue to enjoy your lunch, I'd like to tell you a little bit about one of our keynote speakers today. It's my honor and pleasure to do so. Miss Tierra Young is an avid learner, author, and nurse. She has a passion for helping others that has propelled her journey in its current direction. Miss Young began her career in finance and soon discovered her love for nursing. She began her education and career in nursing in 2016 and is currently a cardiovascular and thoracic surgical registered nurse at the Cleveland Clinic in Ohio. Her past work experience includes positions in nursing, patient care, cosmetology, hospitality, teaching, culinary, consulting, finance, and entrepreneurship. She is a first-generation college student who attended Laurel, an all-girls private school in Shaker Heights, where she played varsity soccer. As a senior in high school, she participated as a student in the Upward Bound Trio program through Case Western Reserve University. This experience introduced her to the world of higher education. While enrolled at Cuyahoga Community College, she was a member of student government and was elected as the board student scholar for a year where she was a voice for all 41,000 students she represented. Tierra advocated for students while interacting with trustees 
and learning the operations of a college board. The inspiration behind this experience had a national and global impact, encouraging Miss Young to take her talents abroad. She's traveled to 18 countries, garnering invaluable exposure and insight. Ms. Young earned a Master of Business Administration in Human Resources from Ashford University and currently attends Herzing University, pursuing a Master's of Science in Family Practice in Nursing. She earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in Finance from Ashford University, an Associate's in Registered Nursing from Bryan and Stratton, and an Associate of Arts degree at Cuyahoga Community College. Ms. Young has a passion for global impact and therefore earned her certification to teach the English language to others. She is an entrepreneur, a motivational speaker, and has served as a financial advisor. Ms. Young recently served as president of the Patient and Family Advisory Board of the Cleveland Medical Center, UH Hospitals. Ms. Young enjoys volunteer work and shares her exuberant love for the arts, music, and theater especially. She has dedicated 12 years of her time to private music lessons at the Cleveland Music School Settlement. She also credits her experiences at the Cleveland Playhouse, working with deaf theater and English sign language, and her time at the Cleveland School of the Arts for contributing to the well-rounded and inspiring person that she is today. Through the ups and downs that life brings, Tierra has kept her focus on her spiritual journey, her family, and moving her mission forward. Her greatest achievement is the honor of raising three wonderful sons, Ian, Ethan and Aiden, and they are absolutely wonderful. It's not just her opinion, I had a chance to meet them. And knowing that her unique strength and ability is not that of her own, but one achieved by the power and grace of her God, Jehovah. Also, as beautiful and as regal as Tierra looks today, the sister can dance. We attend Zumba classes together. And she, she shows up looking as gorgeous and as perfect as she looks right now. And she dances her heart out. So without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to the phenomenal Miss Tierra Young. Oh my God, Miss Pickens, I'm gonna kill you for that one. I got you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, I'm gonna try not to cry because it's been so long pursuing one goal after another. You don't get to hear it all put together like that. And when you do, it hits different. So thank you. I'm gonna talk very briefly because they've only given me a few minutes and it's not enough. I promise you it's not enough. But I want to respect your time. The most impactful thing I can share is how to have an infallible heart. Everyone here is pursuing something. Everyone is on a journey. I could stand here and continue to talk about myself, but I would rather tell you the nuggets I've picked up along the way. First, I need to take a moment to say thank you. Um, Dr. Pixens, thank you for that phenomenal introduction. And although the focus is on me, I would be remiss to stand here and receive credit for anything that I've seemingly done on my own strength, because that would be false. The strength I have, and I've been gracious to receive, is not that of my own, but rather all the credit, first and foremost, goes to the God I exclusively serve, and that is Jehovah. I would not be here or any of the places I've been without that, so I need to say that. Second, I have three amazing sons, not because I am their mother. I mean, anybody who knows me knows I'm very transparent. If they're knuckleheads, I'm gonna tell you they're knuckleheads. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But I want to thank them for being troopers through the journey, through the ups and downs of what life passes on as part of that. You guys are amazing. I tell you all the town how proud I am of you. And I also say as your mother, I don't have to raise you. I get to raise you. Next, for the purposes that we're here today, I want to say thank you to Tri-C, to the Black American Council after multiple graduations. And even though some of them finished elsewhere, I've come back over and over and over again. Thank you for the mentees, the mentors, the administrative staff, the leadership, the financial assistance that's listed down here on this thing in yellow scribble. I'm gonna insert, I was going through a divorce as I was pursuing nursing school here. I had less than $50 in my bank account. And as much as I know about finance, when life hits, it doesn't care what you knew or what you know. It doesn't discriminate. But I had just finished my prereqs to come back into the nursing program and I needed to finish this course, but I didn't have the money. I reached out to BAC and I explained the circumstances. They said, just uh, check the account, the student account in a couple weeks. Let us know if you need anything else. It was only a few hundred bucks, but I say only, but it was just what I needed to get over that hump. Not only was it enough to cover the tuition, it covered the books, it put gas in the car, and it was just enough to get some food to get through that week and the next week, so I kept going. So for that, to anyone, A special shout out to Chevelle, who comes up after me, but it's best for last. <laughs> we were given two tickets for today's event, and I have three sons, and without even thinking twice, he offered one of his own, so that all three of my sons could be here today. Thank you. Jock, Shamin, all the administrative staff, Dr. Marshall, Dave Kuntz, Nichelle, who helped me write this bio, which was more difficult than I thought, <laughs> Dr. Miller, Dr. Johnson, um, Dr. Bastin, the alumni team, Michael, there's so many, thank you. Now, I've used up a good chunk of my time, so I'm gonna move as quickly as I can. When you pick a target of who you wanna be, study and model what that is. There isn't always someone in front of you doing what you want to do. Sometimes you're innovating, and that's OK. Pick who's there, even if it's beyond where you are. Follow that. Success is not a straight line. Many people see this pedestal that they put me on, but they miss the Swiss cheese holes. As I like to say, new levels, new devils, OK? They look different, but it's, you still feel it. So while we all come out and we put on our day's best, we still have to go behind the door and fight those fires. So be there for one another, continue to encourage one another. And, and when someone says, are you okay? It's okay not to be okay. I'm gonna share a few moments with Tri-C Journey. On a lighter note, this is when I started at East Campus. Um, I want to say maybe eight or nine years ago. I was rejourning on my third career at that point, but these are some of the fellow students. I had a wonderful moment with uh, Ms. Angela Johnson. We got to sit on stage. It was my first graduation commencement. Yes, I still have that photo. I said, let's take a, a, a selfie. And I've never seen anyone shift into position as well as she did. I said, what is your background? Because. Well, now I know, and I've never forgot that more. So I gotta get like her. Dr. Alex Johnson, we all, you know, we are so remiss by his presence. Um, moving through that journey, I, I was, as mentioned by um, Dr. Pickens, elected to be the board student scholar. And just a quick note, it's a, it was a seven month process, lots of interviews. You have to be selected by all five campuses to represent the voice. I'm a huge advocate. I have no problem speaking to anyone, because at the end of the day, when you're draped in that OR and we cover you up and we verified who you are and we slice down the middle of your chest, it all looks the same. We're all the same. So being an advocate for those students was an honor. And when I looked up, where are those students five years after they become a board student scholar at Cuyahoga Community College? Stories were amazing. They only picked one. What kept holding me back was I went to Laurel School and you know what? That was an amazing experience. But my art history teacher said to me, to the class of eight, where I was the only minority, that if we ended up at Tri-C, 
we were failures. If we didn't end up at Harvard, Yale, or some other Ivy after having attended a school that cost 22000 a year, then we were a failure. And as I drove 30 minutes home with my dad in a Sanford and Son pickup truck, for me, Tri-C was the gist, you know? So here I had a challenge. Though unbeknownst to him, I was going to prove that wrong. Moving through that journey, I worked at pediatrics at Rainbow. It's been a phenomenal experience. I finished out remiss as one of the best students they've seen in 14 years at Bryan and Stratton. Um, that was an honor, lots of sweat, blood, and tears, but worthwhile. Published my first medical journey with true mentorship. You all are mentors. Reach back, teach back, each one, teach one. Everything you say to a student in a moment that you don't know that you're capturing, it matters. And it was people who believed in me more than I did myself that were able to push me out of that comfort zone to become. So keep doing what you're doing. Panel discussion. I was asked to be a model for the library or something back then. And as you can see, I had a little bit more love with me at that time. They said, pick a book, your favorite book. And it didn't take me long. I said, I know what that is. It's the Bible. Proverbs 8.11 talks about how wisdom is worth more than corals. Somebody keep me on time here because I forgot to start my timer. But it is worth it. There is nothing of greater value. I have, I forgot how many degrees you listed. But at the end of the day, my manager asked me, so where do you want to be, he crossed his arms, where do you want to be in five years? I said, you know what, Scott? In five years, I want to be the dumbest person in the room. Yeah. And he looked like, uh, yeah. I do. I said, I don't understand. The dumbest person in the room? I said, yeah, not because I didn't grow, but because my mentorship did. If I'm in the room and I'm the, the dumbest person in the room, or the least intelligent, shall we say, then when I walk out, I'm better than when I walked in. And I, if I can keep my humility, if I can keep my integrity, the titles, they come and go. The letters, they fly by. We're still human. Then I've achieved what I want in five years. For my students, maintain implicit focus. The more you want to drive towards something, the more something is going to try to take it away. You have to be determined. Cut the fat. Besides the diet that we're eating right now, we have our mental diet, our spiritual diet, our social diet, our physical diet. People say, how do you do what you do? I literally have to bleed out all distractions. You want to starve those distractions, feed your focus. So this is my oldest, Ian, and I at uh, Orange Library. On the weekend, sometimes we are there for six or eight hours, all three of us, all four of us, rather. Um, what are you doing this weekend? Library, taking in knowledge. And not just that, but presence matters too. I tried to teach them, doesn't matter where you are, where you go, represent who you want to be, not who you are. So in case you haven't noticed, um, there's been a lot of journeys that have went down, and taking control of my health was one of them. I was faced with gestational diabetes, multiple hospitalizations, and that, along with the cancer that my ex-husband had, is what drove me back into pursuing health. You can't be healthy if you don't start on the inside. You can't be for looks. has to be because you want to feel better. When you feel better, you look better. When you look better, you do better. Not for anyone else, just for you. These are some of the wonderful benefits, but now, yes, I've spent the last two years cooking and teaching these guys. I'm not coming, I'm asking you what's for dinner. You're not asking me what's for dinner. Um, volunteer, it's always best to give back. You guys represent that, BAC represents that, Tri-C represents that. We spend a lot of time volunteering. There is nothing greater. We actually have a full day schedule for tomorrow, and we love doing that. Mentorship. Quick example, this young lady in the front, standing in front of me in the pink dress, she's in her late 70s now. Her name is Vel Scott, some of them, you may know her. But she collaborated with medical students, did some fantastic projects, and she became a mentor with a vegan program on how you can become healthy in the urban community. If you shop at Save-A-Lot, if you shop at Dave's, if you don't know what couscous is, if you don't have a stove. I took her course six times, I became an ambassador, and I grew with that. Now, in 2023, I just had the opportunity as a nurse practitioner student to collaborate with her again, only this time she was working with me instead of me working with her to once again bring that knowledge to the urban community. So mentorship is invaluable for an infallible heart.
Be ready to save another heart. We walk by so many, and we all have to carry so much. There's not a single person in this room not going through something. But sometimes we say, how are you? And the response is, I'm OK. But stop them, because they're not. And say, no, how are you? And be what they need. It could be a listening ear. It could be a hug. It might mean you need to do something. But how we treat others circles back around. And also know, you never know where you'll see that person again. I'm going to take you guys on a quick trip to Africa. Um, Dr. Pickens mentioned I've been, uh, been around the world a little bit. Um, I got to go there four times. And this was a school I visited and a good friend of mine, a teacher who's there. I took those papers and pens with them on my overstaffed luggage that I already had. <laughs> I was a little overweight. They were so grateful. And what I want is for my students here to know, no matter how little you think you may have, no matter what circumstances you think you may be working with, there's always, always on your worst day someone who feels that they would give anything for that on their best day. These students study under the street lights with a pencil and a fragile piece of paper. Pens are an anomaly. They work with buildings with no facilities, no air, no lunch, two hour commute back and forth, in the humidity and the same clothes all week, and barely complain. That's the chalkboard and the floor real time. And the resources for that classroom are all in that box right there. But it isn't an excuse. They still keep going. They greeted me so well. So I say that to say, for all that we have here in the US, there is a big world out there. Take it global, no matter where you are in your pursuit. Take it global, because there's something you pull from every single one of those experiences. This was me um, doing a, a cosmetic course in West Africa. I learned a lot. It was fantastic. Um, so as we learned the heart, we ha I, I learned this heart at Tri-C East in one of the labs. This is me working with a fellow student. And that was the beginning of what I didn't know would be a very intensive journey. But here, I'm going to take one last moment with you guys, because no matter how good it sounds, the impossible days will come. My teacher was wrong at Laurel. I went to Tri-C, and my first job out, I landed at the second best hospital in the world, but the number one hospital in the world for cardiac care. That means that my seven-month residency, which I just finished two months ago, all sweat and tears, by his own definition, was impossible. But by God's, it was more than doable. I ended up with a day shift, which for new students, that's not happening right now. <laughs> I am one of two African Americans in a department of 117. Last Friday, both my parents, thank you. They're giving me the signal, so I'm going to close out. But last Friday, both my parents were admitted to the hospital unexpectedly as I was standing in the OR holding the heart of another patient. You can't prepare for those days. So as excited as I am, I still walk in the deepest humility. I want to leave that with you guys. Please be a heart. Be prepared to save a heart. Be prepared to give a heart. My son, there's no discussion where he's going for school for the first round. It's right here. He walks the stage on June 4th. I walk the stage on June 9th next month. And right there on the board at Orange, you can see tri -C squares shining bright proudly. OK? What you do matters. What we do matters because what you do matters. Thank you so much for your time. Outstanding, very, very outstanding. I learned a lot today as, a, as an adjunct instructor. I always tell my students that as much as they're gonna learn from me, I'm gonna learn from them. So it's gonna be a continuous cycle of learning. And today I'm learning a lot 
as I continuously do from our students, and this is just amazing. Just a, one housekeeping item. As you look on your tables, there is a card, an index card there, and it has a Q code on there. That is for you to take out your smartphones, which I know all of you have, and you can put your phone on that. And then if you'd like to, as what our guest speaker was talking about, being able to donate to the Black American Council. So please, uh, obviously we like any type of money, but we do like that digital money as well that comes through. So it's not about jingling or folding, but any money that comes through, we will take that. So, and again, as what Ms. Young even said, that dollar goes a long way. It, it really does. So please make sure we donate accordingly as we can. As I'm looking around here, I'm looking at Mr. Smith in the back. I know he's gonna donate a large amount with that. <laughs> so moving forward with our next keynote speaker, I have the honor to introduce Mr. Chevelle Connor. And as well, I've, I've had a long time in history with him when I was here at the Metropolitan Campus as the former director of the Educational Talent Search Program working alongside with Dr. Terry Webb with our barbershop talks as well. So that was very unique to be able to see him come back. So to be able to introduce Shavelle, starting out, Shavelle Connor fell in love with cooking at the age of five as the only child of a single mother who worked relentlessly to provide for him. Shavelle replicated that same persistent mindset, rigorous determination, and confident energy. Ultimately, this foundation would shape his drive to become a chef. Born in Cleveland, Ohio, devotion runs deep in Chevelle's veins. His commitment to succeed has built him up for adversity. Taking life's lemons and creating homemade lemonade from them is a trait Chevelle has perfected. This determination has allowed him to achieve culinary awards, medals, diplomas, and degrees through the American Culinary Federation, Edwin's Culinary Institute, Cuyahoga Community College, and Kent State University. Chevelle has demonstrated cooking on Fox 8 News, CBS 19 News, and the Steve Harvey Show. He has also discussed his love of cooking with CNN Heroes, Huffington Post, and Edwin's newsletter. Since joining the Black American Council and graduating with honors from Cuyahoga Community College, Chevelle has been inducted into the prestigious Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, the Society for Collegiate Leadership and Achievement, the National Society of Leadership and Success, and Male Empowerment Network. He has earned numerous Dean's List accolades and is a member of many honors programs. After initiating his quest for higher education through Kent State University, Chevelle graduated with honors, earning magna cum laude. His willingness to volunteer is a tremendous example of his altruism. Nonprofit organization, which includes Shoulder to Shoulder, Soup for the Soul, Towards Employment, Mid-East Honors Association, and North Central State College provided platforms that have allowed him to display his taking the initiative approach. This path has generated thousands of smiles and countless ovations and a lifetime of memories. His motto, dedication, determination, and discipline derives from setting examples from all those who were told their goals are unachievable. His goal was to become a chef, which he masterfully earned. Certified CDC, Chef de Cuisine, Chevelle's commitment started with a dream. Without further ado, Mr. Chevelle Connor. short. Hi, everybody doing? Uh, can we give another round of applause for Ms. Young? <clears throat> How do we empower, motivate, and encourage young African-American males to continue to aspire to accomplish their dreams despite the turmoil they may or may not be facing? How do we create a pathway built on a foundation of higher education that redefines statistics and ignite change? Am I wrong for wanting higher education? Inside the classroom, why am I judged by the lack of knowledge on this particular subject? Isn't that the reason why I'm taking the class? 
Judgment plays a significant role not only in the life of African-American males and females, but people of all cultures and creed. I am Chevelle Connor, a Cuyahoga Community College alumni, BAC alumni, and today my speech will address why what we do matters, while challenging and proposing resolution on how do we defeat stereotyping and the effects of enduring these biases in pursuit of higher education. <clears throat> Presently in society, African-American males are often judged not by who they are in the inside or who they have the potential to become, but rather by the neighborhoods where they grew up. Furthermore, judgment is passed on them for the mistakes they've made or the mistakes made of those African-American males who have grown up in those same neighborhoods. This judgment extends to schools, specifically community colleges, which then creates normalized interactions while faculty which, cre which then creates normalized interactions with faculty, staff, and students. So how do we defeat being stereotyped and the effects of enduring these biases? Stereotyping of African-American male students lead people in general, as well as themselves, to underestimate their capabilities. Stereotyping not only affects the attributions of professors regarding these students' interactions, but affecting the students' understanding of what's the norm. Example. Imagine you were asked by a professor if you knew the material he or she was going over for the day. Your response was, no. And the, and the professor replied, you mean to tell me you didn't learn that in middle school, not even high school? You say something like, my school wasn't the best. <clears throat> Although you don't know the material, isn't that the reason you're in class for you to learn what it is you haven't so far? The lack of reinforcement pressures these African-American males into internalizing these biases, resulting in disengagement and ultimately dropouts. When there's a group of African-American males, and when they look at campus security and they notice they only arrest African-American men, this activates the stereotype that <clears throat> this activates the stereotype that African-American males are the target. The stereotype make it harder for those men to stay in school, let alone to thrive. Example. Imagine you lock your keys in your car, so you call campus police for assistance. On arrival, the officer asks you, do you have any outstanding warrants? Normalized behavior allows this officer to behave in such a manner because of the repetitive social norms perception making it justifiable. Internalizing acts like this one manipulates you, as well as African-American men, resulting in conformity of the social norms, which I find to be profound is everyone involved knows of this wrong, yet it's accepted and disregarded. But what about those African-American males who are excelling far beyond the average student, even farther than the so-called smartest students? Those African-American males are considered lucky or fortunate, but why? Imagine you made the dean's list and into the, the honor society, and the response was, you made the dean's list? Huh. Boy, you lucky. You made it into the honor society? Wow. How fortunate you are. I would say how facetious you are. Let us be clear. It is your academic performance that earned you membership into the honor society. It is your academic performance that earned you a spot on the dean's list. So how do we make it so every African-American male, including females on campus, isn't considered lucky or fortunate to have accomplished certain feats, rather deserving and earning of their accomplishments? I mean, it was hard work that demanded dedication, that demanded determination, demanded discipline. So by acknowledging their pathway, their journey, the appreciation should be more profound, more devout. Congratulations on a job well done. On a job well done. You did it, big dog. Rather than disregarded, oh, you pulled yourself up by the bootstraps, huh? Because success comes to those who deserve it. So absolutely, yes, what we do matters. Additionally, we must acknowledge those individuals who have cemented themselves in the life of these African-American males for the sole purpose of helping them beyond measures in pursuit of attaining higher education. I'm talking about the Dr. Francis Franklin's of the college, the Nina Turner's of the college, the Jennifer Rovat, Shameen Jones, the Jock Smiths, the Terry Webbs, the Warren Glenn's of the college. You are all true testaments of what we do matters. But... 
But how do we address the flawed social norms and perceptions of African-American males? Programs. Programs that reduce the interpersonal problems that dichotomize faculty and students and strengthening the positive social norms while diminishing those negative norms that inaccurately stereotype African-American men. We have programs in place, as you see, Black American Council, right? So let's move our programs from busy to impactful. Balancing cons concern, uh-oh. <laughs> Balancing concern with hope. Inspiring effective leaders. We're going we're gonna to just, because <laughs> we got to get this across. Right. Inspiring effective leaders. Let us take our bias training from making, from, let's take our bias training and make it mandatory rather than optional. Programs like these have the potential to restore relations between faculty, staff, and students significantly. As for the community and our future community college graduates, creating programs that are designed for our youth are the keys needed to help us ignite change. Programs that allow our youth access to accomplished young African American males who look like them, come from similar neighborhoods like them, not only will these accomplished African American males be a walking testament of the message they're trying to convey, but they will also provide authenticity for our youth. So as I conclude, I've discussed, addressed, challenged, and proposed resolution on how do we defeat stereotyping and the effects of enduring these biases in pursuit of higher education. I've explained why it is what we do matter. I ask, could this be the way we change the perception of African American males from being a threat, a criminal, a hoodlum, to being identified as a scholar, a leader, Better yet, how about a college student? Thank you. I'd like to bring back to the podium Dr. Terry Webb. And again, don't forget those QR codes are right in front of you for those of you who have deep pockets. I greatly enjoyed both of you all, Ms. Young and Mr. Connor. All I can say is, my brother, I, I was just touched, man. You brought that like I would. Just drive it on home. Don't ever be ashamed. Don't ever be afraid. Always speak the truth and let, it, let what happened happen. Stay on that journey. I'm praying that you got some of that from us, from all those meetings we used to have and stuff with the fellas. And, and uh, well, hey, hey, you know what? Black men are oftentimes treated as pariahs. And we're not really recognized for the greatness that we do. All, a lot of people think all we can do is run with a ball, catch a ball, throw a ball, or bring somebody the ball. When there's so many other things that we can do. And Tri-C and the things that BAC are doing are opening the minds and the doors of people to let them know that we can own the place that makes the ball. <laughs> Own a team, manage the players. We don't have to be the players. I could own where you playing. And charge you $20 for a hot dog I paid 50 cent for. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. All I can say to what you said is, well, 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 my brother, let's keep pushing on. And we're gonna replicate you and replicate you and bring you back to talk to us. Maybe even this fall, where's Dr. Jock at? For our Black and Brown Summit that we're gonna have here. So we're gonna, just yeah, shameless plug, in the fall we're gonna have it. Invite all your brothers, nephews, uh, grandchildren, your sibling, church members, mosque members, temple members, hall members. We just want brothers black and brown here to encounter dynamic young men such as him who will be able to touch and enlighten uh, other people coming behind him and came before him because I'm getting old. Some people might not want to listen to me, but they will listen to him. I just need to know who does know. I don't need to know everything and I just thank God for you and all the things that you all are doing. Keep on keeping on. Now I have the distinction and honor and privilege for I get beat up for breaking, breaking, but he touched me there, I say. 
uh, to keep going in this program to announce what am I? Oh, I'm outstanding mentee. See, I got shaken. Here we go. But before I go on, I do. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the mentors. Any mentors that are present, please stand. And as they stand, stand up. It's all right. We're not gonna ask y'all for no money right now. Stand up. Let's give them a round of applause. God bless you all. You labor tirelessly. Your cell phone is available. Your email is blown up. Oftentimes, those of us who mentor, your wallet is blown up. Your tires are worn out on your car. You even taking people shopping because you want to do the best you can to get the best out of individuals who may be underrepresented and may not have the information they need. So I congratulate you all, mentors, for doing everything that you've done. Because I know myself, if it wasn't for a Eugene Bragg and a Carrie A. Period, R. Period Johnson and a Jacqueline Golson, I might be one of those people he said we shouldn't be talking about. What y'all do does matter. And if you are a mentee, please stand. Oh, uh, y'all clap like y'all mean it. Clap like the Browns won the Super Bowl. Raise the roof up in here. We love y'all. Amen, amen. And you know what, y'all? Don't let our good looks and suits and all this stuff fool y'all. We have been where y'all are. And it hasn't always been a bright, sunshiny day. We just stayed the course and finished the race. No matter how we fell down, we found a way to get back up. And if you don't know a way to get back up, all you got to do is dial B-A-C. <laughs> and with that being said, it is my pleasure for me to present to us the Outstanding Mentee Award and what his professor the distinguished professor of communications, Derek L. Williams, said, Dr. Derek L. Williams wrote, he says, I hold them in the highest esteem and can confidently share why I think Daniel has the academic aptitude, leadership, professionalism, and personal qualities to be awarded the honor of BAC Mentee of the Year. I was immediately impressed with Daniel from the moment I met him. He is one of the most respectful people I have ever met. Now that's a serious compliment. His sense of compassion for the students and selflessness of his character stood out among his peers. Daniels always provided leadership by facilitating discussion, encouraging his peers to share their opinions, and validating opposing viewpoints. He was equally open to points of view besides his own, which are a key component to critical thinking in higher education. These are all qualities associated with the talents of a student leader in which I think Daniel flourishes in. This is evident in his leadership roles at, across Tri-C as an executive board member of student government, Phi Theta Kappa, an activity board executive member, Jack Joseph and Morton Mandel Scholar, and recipient of the Dean's East Excellence Award he also worked closely with me and surrounding communities to promote reading and a literacy program for black boys. I would like to present to some and introduce to others, Mr. Daniel Morgan, Jr. Hey, y'all take pictures of him. And notice this is an award, not a ball. <laughs> Can we have one more round of applause? We 
would like to bring Rwanda Ellis Hill to the podium. Rwanda Ellis Hill is the Dean of Students of the Metro Campus of Cuyahoga Community College. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I can honestly say I know exactly how Karen feels after she follows Dr. Baston. I have to go after the Reverend there. <laughs> no, thank you, Dr. Webb. Um, so I'm excited to join you here today, especially because we are finally back in person and we get to continue our tradition of fellowship together as we recognize so many of our gifted students. Um, as uh, once again, we had about 25 entries um, this year, and, and you know, we, this is an essay contest as is listed, but this year we again followed our tradition and we expanded upon that. So before I get, I get ahead of myself, I see one of my committee members. I have to say we had a six-person committee, and if any of the committee members are here besides, including Felisa, please stand. Come here, right. <laughs> oh, Lori. And I have to recognize them because uh, we, I mean, they were outstanding, but some of them are really, really long. And um, um, throughout this process, we do get the opportunity um, to recognize our students, but also to look at the different types of learning and gifts that we can see. And so um, within our, our um, push, to try to continue to look at the diversity of our students and to promote equity, and I mean equity in learning, as we have people who have different types of, of, of strengths. We had three different types of entries that could be entered. Uh, one was creative writing, so we continue the tradition of the essays. Two was mixed media, so we did get some posters and some YouTube videos. Um, and then the last one is um, a performance. Yeah, and with that, we took a look at all of these entries and we kind of have five criteria that we use to judge them. First, we looked at, number one, a connection to the prompt. We couldn't turn in the old paper. We had to be connected to the prompt. Um, organization, originality, impactfulness, and finally, grammar and spelling. And with that, everyone had to answer the same prompt. And that prompt read, over the last year, we witnessed Kataji Brown Jackson become the first black woman to serve as a Supreme Court Justice. And we also watched as black women led the charge to get Brittany Griner released from a Russian prison. Many felt that these acts took great optimism, perseverance, and grace, and will continue to impact future generations. Thinking back on these developments, how can you embody the persistence and optimism that supported this progress and will demonstrate that what we do matters? And from that, um, out of those 25 entries or so, we came up and the top seven will be recognized today. And um, with that, I'm gonna read the winners. If you are here and you hear your name, please stand. I'm gonna kinda start a little bit backwards. And I must say, let's continue our prayer, cause these are some, this is a mouthful of names here. Let's see, <laughs> as you see, I'm gonna start at the bottom. Um, Olu Wa Fun Mike, Anafade. <laughs> Zanab Hassan. Jumoke Bola Bolaji. Olu Ogolade. <laughs> Emmanuel Amadu. <laughs> Judah Ugbu. <laughs> and Ade Adesami. And in our new, as we create our new tradition, you guys can have a seat. We're going to ask Ade to come up and to read his poem, as that was his entry. Thank 
Thank you very much, Dean. Um, <clears throat> the title of my poem, it's, it's taken from the same theme, What We Do Matters. In a world that is full of chaos and strife, where it is easy to feel the loss in life, there are those who rise above the fray and lead the way to a brighter day. Black women, with strength and grace, are the ones who set the pace for future generations to follow, uh, to follow and build a world that is less hollow. From Harriet Tubman's brave escape to Maya Angelou's poetic grace, from Ketenji legislative might to Kamala Harris' historic flight. Black women have always been at the helm, breaking barriers and raising the realm for what is possible for all to see and inspiring us to be all we can be. Their resilience in the face of adversity, their unwavering commitment to diversity, their determination to make a difference is why their impact will last for eternity. Black women, we see you and we know you. Your contribution to the world will only grow. We stand with you in the struggle for parity and vow to honor your legacy with unity. For what we do today matters. And we do for all others is what truly flatters. flatters. Let us follow in the footsteps of those before and make a difference that will forever sow. Thank you. Okay, I have one more award that I need to present, and that is the Azalda Singleton Davidson Davis Scholarship. So this scholarship supports an African-American female who is a sophomore at Cuyahoga Community College's Metropolitan Campus and who has demonstrated academic excellence in the humanities, and that is excluding education in the physical science. Um, this young lady um, is, should be matriculating to her upper division college or university and, this, and the decisions um, were based on um, academic excellence in humanities. The award that they will receive is renewable for one year, and this year that award is for $1,350. And this year we have two winners. The first winner is Nika Vales. She wasn't able to join us today. But our one winner, Sharia Abdul Khalid, is here with us today. So Sharia, please come get your award. With that, I conclude. One detail that Rolanda left out is that she is also a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> We'd like to welcome back to the podium Dr. Lemuel Stewart III, who will be presenting the Academic Excellence Award. Dr. Stewart? I'm back again. So as I mentioned, uh, we are giving away in scholarships $61,750 today. <laughs> that is a long way from our first scholarship, which was $100. And due to the support of the college, the foundation, 
the administration, and our generous donors, we are now to this point of over $61,000. So we thank you. So now let's give away some more money. <laughs> okay. So this group of students uh, will receive a gift of $1,000. They have maintained a 4.0 GPA, and all of them have over 30 credit hours. So when you hear your name, please stand. Teo Kowoli. Mariah Moore. Daniel Morgan. And Javita Sanders. Our next group of students will receive a gift of $750. These students have a GPA of 3.5 to 3.99 and have 24 credit hours or more. If you see your name on the screen, please stand to be recognized. <laughs> we got a lot of them. Our Merit Award students, these students have a GPA of 3.0 to 3.49, and they will receive a $500 gift. If you see your name on the screen, please stand to be recognized. And our Academic Achiever students, these students have a GPA of 2.5 to 2.99, and they will receive a $300 award. If you see your name on the screen, students, please stand to be recognized. So one more round of applause for all of our scholarship winners. have all of we need to have all of our students start lining up now got it. okay the graduates Now we recognize all of our graduating seniors. When you hear your name called, please come to the stage. Why oh, do they bring your cards? Rose Brown. Sharia Abdul Khalik. <laughs> Natasha Dumas. <laughs> Bridget Cofield. <laughs> Drake Hatcher. Latasha Golfin. Dewana Hopkins. K. 
Kevin Hawk. Tashia Porter. Kylan Kirkland. And our remaining uh, graduating seniors, their names are on the screen. So congratulations to all of our students. <laughs> Give our graduates another round of applause, please. <laughs> and again, while we have a little bit of time here, I'm going to take care of some more housekeeping items. And again, that QR code is there. As I know how what people are riding into work in, I know you got deep pockets. So please, we want to hear that cash app sound as you donate to the Black American Council as well. Also, while we still have a few minutes, um, Shamine, could you please wave your hand, please? Everyone direct your attention back to Ms. Shamine Jones. Now, if you look at the program, you won't see Shamine's name. But if you look around the room, you will see Shamine everywhere in the details all the way down, all the way down to these beautiful fresh flower centerpieces, Shamine has handled the details. In the gaps, and she's kept that beautiful smile that she has on her face right now, not complaining, and Shamine has held it down behind the scenes. And Shamine, we want to thank you for a beautiful program. other housekeeping items which is very important we have some very important people here as well that bring a lot of excellence to the black american council and the first person i'd like to recognize who's been a great mentor of me since my entire time of being here at the college and that's dr felix phyllis dukes hobson and she is the former president of the black american council she could please stand as well as the I, I have to say this, the honorable former MC himself, my frat brother of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, and that is Brother Terry Butler. Terry, we, we can't do it like you, Terry, but we just try to you know, live up to your amazing, amazing performances over the years as the host with the most. We really appreciate you. Right. And moving forward with the agenda, we'd like to bring the Black American Council Program Manager, Mr. Jock Smith Sr. to the podium as he has a couple words and acknowledgments. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause real quick for our MCs today. Thank you so much, Dr. Pickens, Dr. Glenn. Good afternoon. And we're trying to get on out of here, so but I wanted to make sure we did something here today. We are honored to have special guests joining us today whose commitment to Tri-C, particularly the Black American Council, will help us better prepare our students in the classroom and the workplace. I'm pleased to recognize David and Karen Horton. David is the Chief Financial Officer for the Amsdell Companies. Amsdell is a valued supporter of scholarships and internships opportunities for Tri-C students of color. Karen is a first-generation college graduate and CPA consultant. She has a passion to help first-generation college students succeed. Their generous Skills to Succeed campaign commitment 
will support students served by the Black American Council, and BAC, and first-generation students. These funds will enhance BAC's mentoring program, increase professional development opportunities, expand our K-12 access, and develop student and staff materials. The funds will also support the First Scholars Network participation that benefits first-generation students through professional development, staffing, outreach, student activities, and educational materials. David and Karen, thank you. <laughs> Next, I am also honored to recognize a longtime partner with, with the college, PNC. PNC has supported Tri-C and the Tri-C Foundation for more than 20 years. Representing PNC today are Antonia Ellis, Tracy Mitchell, and Barbara Jafarian. The PNC Foundation's recent generous gift helps Tri-C fund critical wraparound services, including paid job opportunities, relief funds to overcome unanticipated emergencies, and opportunities to participate in learning communities. In 2000, PNC helped establish the High Tech Academy, a dual enrollment program with CMSD that prepares high school students for, our, for higher education. We are pleased to have some of them here today, High Tech Academy, sitting with us. <laughs> PNC, PNC is also a presenting sponsor for Tri-C's Foundation's, Tri Foundation's Presidential Scholarship Luncheon, a presenter, a premier annual event that raises support for scholarships. Thank you, PNC. Thank you, Jacques. We have now reached the end of our program. I would like to welcome to the podium Dr. Cynthia Martin, co-chair of the Francis M. Franklin Scholarship Luncheon Committee, and also associate professor of French at the Western Campus of Cuyahoga Community College. Come on up, Cynthia. She will deliver closing remarks at this time. Good afternoon. <laughs> it's been a wonderful afternoon. I've just loved being here with all of you, seeing all of you in person. And um, I continue to doing this every single year that we have this, which will be for the rest of our lives, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How do I know for a fact that each and every one of you seated here today in the Alex Jackson Campus Center really do believe that what we do matters? It's because the fact that we're all here together in this particular moment to celebrate our BAC mentees clearly demonstrates that what we do matters because we're doing something, we're here. Our simply being here shows us that they matter to us, and that we, of course, matter to them. Therefore, thank you for attending today. I say thank you to all of our donors for the unwavering cont contributions and support of our students and of the Francis and Franklin Scholarship Luncheon. Your actions clearly illustrate that what all of us do in attendance at this very special event and have done so continuously does really matter. I would also like to thank our college president, Dr. Martin, uh, Michael A. Baston, excuse me, our college provost, Dr. Karen C. Miller, and our college leadership team. Thank you, Dr. Denise McCory, president of the Metropolitan Campus, for hosting us today, and executive vice president, David Kuntz, and Vice President Angela Johnson for your tremendous support. I would also like to extend a special thank you to everyone featured on today's program, to our keynote speakers who are members of our alumni uh, and for whom we are very, very proud of having you and thank you for reaching out and sharing just, as, just how much the Black American Council has impacted your lives and your careers. Thank you to everyone associated with our foundation department, led by Vice President Mrs. 
Megan O'Brien. We also extend a special thank you to Ms. Becky Krimhansel uh, and, and Mr. Ryan York. Thank you to all of our 2023 Francis and Franklin Scholarship Luncheon Volunteers. Could you please wave your hands and let us know that you're here. Our volunteers, thank you. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. And our Francis and Franklin Scholarship Luncheon Committee, myself, uh, Ms. Cicely Campbell, um, Campbell, Ms. Shemeen Jones, Ms. Brianna Whitlock, Mrs. Carolyn Rado in marketing, uh, Ms. Elisa Meadows for campus scheduling, and to Mr. Jack Smith, whom we all, there's more, there's more, <laughs> appreciate and truly admire for all that he has done, all that you have done. Jack, where are you, Jack? All you've done, Jack, thank you. <laughs> and will do as program manager for the Black American Council. Thank you, Ms. Sherry Can, um, catering coordinator of our campus dining services staff for providing our delicious meals and wonderful dining experience today. Thank you, Mr. Daniel Mayer and team in the back of this faculty for serving as our digital media technicians. Uh, by the way, today's scholarship luncheon has been recorded and will be available on our BAC webpage for later viewing. And last, and definitely not least, thank you to all of our BAC student mentees. Today is definitely all about you, because you are the very special reason that we're all here together. We congratulate you, we celebrate you, and appreciate your tenacity for academic excellence. Last, but definitely not least, we definitely want to thank, uh, give uh, an enormous round of applause to our MCs for today, Dr. Tony Pickens, Dr. Warren Glenn. Please know how much we appreciate. <laughs> know how much we appreciate you. Okay, and in conclusion, I will say goodbye and hope to see you all again next year, the year after that, year after that, year after that. <laughs> Thank you. May this never end. All right, everyone, take care.